Well, I've come to look at the replica of the CSS Noose. The CSS Noose was a steam-powered, ironclad ram in the Confederate Navy. This ship is 158 feet long and 34 feet wide and was constructed in the Kinston area. This ship also has a flat bottom so that it can navigate the rivers and not draw too much water. The CSS Noose, one of the Confederate ironclads. This replica is amazing. This ship has five gun ports on each end of the ship and these gun covers on the ports are lowered by a rope. And when the gun port is not in use, you pull the rope up and it closes up the gun port. This keeps enemy fire from coming into the ship and killing your crew. One thing I think is nice is they have a monument for the shipbuilder who supervised the construction of this replica. You arrive at the replica ironclad, you go in through the back. Just goes up these stairs. The ship is free. They just ask for donations. What? This is the gun deck. Where I'm standing is where the rear cannon would have been. To enable visitors to enter the ship, they've cut out one of the gun ports. As you look around the gun deck, you can see the stairs to the lower deck. And if you look across the gun deck, you can see the pilot house and the other gun, and also some other displays. They have the ship's bell right in front of the pilot house, and the pilot house is where they would have steered the ship. In the pilot house, the pilot would have looked out one of the three openings here. Of course, they're now closed to keep the rain out. They have a reproduction of a Brook rifled cannon. This cannon could be rotated to point out any of the gun ports. When I came on board to visit the ship, I met Gary Hines, and he told me a lot about the ship. All right, well, my name is Gary Hines. I'm a native of Kenston. I've been here all my life. This one, the reproduction, which is a full-scale, one-to-one reproduction of the original ship. Uh, was, we started it in 2001, and we're still working on this. Like I said, this is a this ship is being built entirely by private donations, volunteers. It's run by a small board, and we just have enough people to keep it open on Saturday. About the this ship and the original. It had two cannons on it. Now these were big rifled cannons. Rifled means they got a twist, they're accurate. They're banded, Brooks rifled. They're got these bands on it so that they can have extra pressure. They can put extra powder in there and, and it being rifled, it took 25 men to operate this one cannon because everything is works off of pulleys and ropes and manpower. These stairs were not part of the original ship, but the reproduction has them for the convenience of their visitors. At the bottom of the stairs would have been the coal bin for the ship. The original noose is in a museum across town, and this model at the museum shows where the original stairs for the ship would have been. This is the boiler of the ironclad. This is the back of the boiler where they would have kept the fire going to keep the steam up for the engine. 
I imagine this would have been a hot place to be. On this end of the boiler, it would have been connected to the smokestack so that the heat would travel through the boiler and up through the smokestack. This part of the ship they use as a workroom, but originally this would have been where the engines for the ship would have been located. Once again, looking at the model, you can see the two big cylinders of the engine sitting on wooden supports in this model. On the original ship, you can see the wooden supports for the engine of the ship. This is the galley of the ship. This is where the men would have gathered for their meals and things of that nature. That ladder goes up to the deck. That's how the men would have gotten on the ship. And as we go around, this is the bow of the ship. The galley is also where most of the men on the crew would have slept. They would have strung their hammocks here and slept. This would have been the ladder the men would have used to get on and off the ship. This would have been the powder magazine of the ship where they just stored all the powder for combat. This is the projectile room where they would have stored the ammunition of the ship needed to sink other ships. One of the entrances to the ship would have been through the projectile room. In the very stern of the ship, there would have been a space for storing material. Here we find one of the officer's quarters on the ship. Still in the officer's quarters. This is the captain's quarters of the ship. He's the man with the most room on the entire ship. Now you've been in all the major spaces of the ship. So let's go back up to the gun deck and learn more about the ship. It, the only time it shot in anger is if the Yankees were coming from Newburn and the ship went down the river to where it could shell the road. Now there was 18,000 of these people coming versus 90 men on the ship. But anyhow, he was shelling these Yankees, but 18,000 of them, he knew it was just a matter of time before they surrounded him, reduced the ship, killed or captured his men. So what he decided to do was get his men off. He didn't lose a single man and then set the ship on fire and it burned down to the magazine and blowed a hole in the magazine and the ship sank real fast in the river and put the fire out. That, that left a nearly intact battleship, but it being March of 1865, it could have been salvaged. But the Yankees didn't want it, and we couldn't afford to get it up. So it sat in the river for another 90 years until 1960. Some local people, we always knew it was there. People fished off of it, swam around it. There were some people that even dove and went inside of it as far as they could and got some artifacts off of it. Uh, but anyhow, in 1960, they started digging it up. And all that's left now over the years is the hull. It's in a museum across the street. But this is a full scale, one to one, if you were to pick this one up and could set it inside that one, they'd match. 158 feet from stem to stern, about 33 feet wide. It took about 12, 13 feet of water to float it. And now that river had plenty of water in it back then, but it was still tight. There was no dams on it back then. So, it was strictly a, a river ship. It was not meant to go in the ocean. 
it was meant to go down as far as Newburn and retake Newburn, which was a big uh, seaport, but it never made it. I was fortunate enough that when I was about 10 years old, my mama had a, a curiosity. She went down to where they were digging up the original ship, and because she was curious, I've got a picture in my brain of a Confederate battleship actually floating in the river. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our visit to the CSS Ram Ironclad, the CSS Noose. Till next time, see ya. If you'd like to learn more about the Noose, you can watch the video I made on the CSS Noose Civil War Interpretive Center, which is the museum that the original CSS News is housed in. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.